Hello, for today we're going to look at this idea of reaction profiles for chemical reactions. Now, the first thing to remember is that reactions between particles only happen if the particles collide with enough energy. So that means in chemical reactions, particles collide, but they must collide with enough energy for those two particles to react with each other. So we could take a little simple look at an example. Here we've got two particles of two different substances and they are colliding there. But as you can see they haven't reacted and that's because they haven't collided with enough energy. If we look again and this time we have more energy in the collision we actually have a chemical reaction and we have in this case the production the production of a compound. We could go with higher energy, we could react them with higher energy or collide them with higher energy and we would still get our reaction. So there is a minimum amount of energy needed for those two to collide with each other in order for that reaction to happen. We call that the activation energy. The activation energy. And this is an important keyword, so we can double highlight that one. And that actually just means it's the activation energy is the minimum energy the particles must have in order to react. So that's what we mean by activation energy. And we're going to look at that a bit more in a bit more detail in a moment. Now, here is our reaction profile for a chemical reaction. Along the bottom we have the progress of the reaction and on the side we have the energy of the reactants or products. So here in this example we've got our reactants, often it's uh, two reactants that are reacting, and on the other side here we've got our products. Now as you can see the energy of the products is lower than the energy of the reactants. That means there must be a loss of energy somewhere. In actual fact, we don't refer to it as a loss of energy. We talk about the reactants and the products being at different energy levels. And in this case, the products are at a lower energy level. So we talk about a transfer of energy to the surroundings. So in this case, energy is transferred to the surroundings. And you can imagine for a reaction for example a combustion reaction, this would be transferred as heat and light to the surroundings. So this is an example of an exothermic reaction. We can see this because the product's energy level is lower than that of the reactants. That means energy must have been transferred into the surroundings. And as we said, an example for this could be a combustion reaction. Now we don't always get an energy profile or a reaction profile diagram that looks like that. Sometimes we have one that looks like this. And this is where the reactants are actually at a lower energy level than the products. So you can see the energy of the products is higher than that of the reactants. That means in order for that to happen, energy must have come from somewhere. And in this case, it's actually energy transferred into the reaction, so into the product. So you can see here, we've got higher energy in the products. So therefore, we say that energy has been transferred from the surroundings. So energy is transferred from the surroundings in this particular example where the energy of the products is higher than the energy of the reactants. And as you can imagine, if you've watched the previous video, this is an example of what we call an endothermic reaction. This is an example of an endothermic reaction, energy transferred from the surroundings. Now what we can do is put some of our ideas together that we've learned over the previous or the first half of this video and look at a reaction profile that includes everything that we've talked about. So we've got reaction profiles. They can be used to show the relative energies of the reactants and products. In other words, the energies of those two compared to each other. We can look at the activation energy and the overall energy change of a reaction. And that can all be shown in one reaction profile diagram. So here is a reaction profile diagram of the kind we've been looking at. And this one is, for example, for the reaction of methane with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. And this is actually a combustion reaction. This is burning. And the fuel here in this case is methane. So we could actually add our reactants to our diagram and our products. And you can see the products are at a lower energy level than the reactants. So the energy of the carbon dioxide and water is lower than that of the methane and the oxygen. And we could actually just label the fact that we've got our reactants and our products here as we did previously. What actually happens in between those? Well, this is where we include the idea of our activation energy. There are a couple of labels that you should be able to put on a diagram like this. And one of those is the activation energy. And the activation energy is the energy required to get the reaction going. And that would be represented by that hump in the diagram there. So this is the activation energy. It's the difference between 
the energy of the reactants and the peak of that little bump in the graph. Okay, so we also have, in this case, not just the activation energy, but we also have the overall energy change of a reaction. And that's the reaction, and that's the difference between the reactants and the products. That's the overall energy change, not taking into account the activation energy. So that's between those two, and as you can see with this arrow here, this represents, that distance there represents the overall energy change. So it's the difference in the energy of the reactants versus the products. And as you can see, because we've got energy lost or energy transferred to the surroundings, this is again an example of an exothermic reaction. And if you think about it, it kind of makes sense. Combustion is exothermic. Energy is transferred to the surroundings as heat and light. And that's where the energy goes. And that's why we have less energy of products compared to the reactants. It's a combustion reaction. So here we have our two diagrams for those two different kinds of reaction. On the left, we have our exothermic reaction where energy is transferred to the surroundings. And on the right, we have our endothermic reaction, where energy is transferred in from the surroundings. You should be able to sketch these diagrams out for those two types of reaction and recognize them if you're given them in a question. Okay, so that's about it for this video today on reaction profiles. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you very soon.